Hi, I'm Ben Greenbaum with Cisco's Advanced Threat Solutions Group, and we're going to talk today about Cisco ThreatGrid. ThreatGrid is Cisco's advanced malware analysis and malware threat intelligence platform, and it drives many of the security offerings we have across the Advanced Threat Solutions portfolio. In the next 15 to 20 minutes, we're going to talk about how it works, what it does, and I'm going to walk you through the interface to show you how you can leverage the power of this advanced malware analysis platform to detonate your malware on our network instead of yours. We're going to start by looking at the dashboard, the first interface with which you are presented when you log into the ThreatGrid portal. And in the dashboard, we see across the top, we have some statistics showing you details about your usage of the system showing how many submissions you have submitted, who has been submitting them, what kinds of file types, and the average analysis time. I want to bring your attention to this to show you that in, in this example, in my usage of the system, my analyses tend to finish in about 10 minutes, just under 10 minutes. And it breaks it down further into how much of that time is spent in the queue, running the malware, and processing the data that is generated as a result. Now, ThreatGrid processes millions of potentially malicious samples per day and you only have to wait 10 minutes from any file to be told what that file did and if it was considered to be malicious. Directly below that, you have this bar of screenshots of the malware that was submitted most recently. And you can see that you get a zoomed in version of the thumbnail and even an ability to click play here and watch the console video seeing in real time what happens during the course of the analysis. You can also click on any of these to go directly to the analysis reports that resulted from the sample having been submitted. You can see much more detail about the sample and its execution on this page. You can also see whether any of your own systems have been recorded as having seen this file. In this case, we can see that yes, one of my endpoints has actually had this file on it. This all works because of Cisco visibility. Cisco Visibility is Cisco's new integration platform. We have a broad and diverse array of advanced threat solutions products and other security products across the portfolio, and Cisco Visibility is how we tie all of them together. I'll talk a little bit more about visibility as we go through the interface, but just bear in mind that it is our integrations hub and our platform for increased interoperability between our products. The rest of these numbers also come from visibility and show us additional detail about what judgments have been made against this file and by what systems, what verdicts have been made about this file and by who, and various indicators and the sources of that information, all again powered by Cisco visibility. Below that we see additional information about the file and the execution of the file. Behavioral indicators are something we should spend a little bit of time on. Behavioral indicators are the building block of malware intelligence in ThreatGrid. ThreatGrid does two kinds of analysis at a high level. Static analysis, where we observe characteristics of the file as it sits on disk, and dynamic analysis, where of course we run the file in a virtualized environment. Both of these can lead to behavioral indicators, which simply detail those characteristics or those actions taken by the file. In this example, we can see that there were several behavioral indicators that were flagged as a result of the analysis, things like the file dropping artifacts that were flagged by antivirus engines and services, the PE checksum being invalid, and going on downwards in descending order of threat score. The scores over here on the right indicate how malicious or suspicious the action is. You can see that being flagged as a known Trojan is rated as a fairly suspicious or malicious behavioral indicator for a sample to have, and then the PE checksum being invalid rated a 25 is still suspicious, but not necessarily on its own, an indicator of maliciousness. And each of these, if I click on and expand, you can see that it gives more detail exactly what artifact was flagged as what kind of Trojan, or the details of the PE checksum and its invalidity. Continuing downwards, we get information as well about the TCP IP connections and other network connections that were made during the course of this analysis. The thing I want to draw your attention to here is that next to each of these IP addresses, there's this drop down pivot menu. This is going to appear next to any observable in the analysis reports, whether that's an IP address, a file checksum, a domain, a URL, etc. This is all also powered by visibility, and this can show you 
additional points of research for this observable. You can search for this IP in your AMP for endpoints installation. You can search for it in Talos Intelligence. You can look at it in different ways elsewhere in ThreatGrid. You can view it in the Umbrella dashboard, and of course you can investigate it directly in visibility. Part of the purpose of our engineering efforts into providing greater interoperability between our products, and part of the purpose behind Cisco Visibility, the integrations toolkit, is to reduce the amount of time that security practitioners have to spend copying and pasting observables between different interfaces. Going back to the dashboard, we're now looking at the processes part of the analysis report, and we can see here the list of all the processes and sub-processes that were kicked off in the course of the analysis. Additionally, we have a couple of other viewing options over here on the right. We have the process timeline, which shows you the relationships between the processes and when they appeared in the course of the samples analysis run. And we also have the process tree which shows you details about the hierarchy of the processes and some additional information about what each of these processes did, file and registry actions that they may have taken. Over here on the right as well, we can also view the console video if you want to actually watch what happened on the system while this was running. But back to the analysis report, we can also skip around in the analysis report here on the left-hand side. So here we see the list of artifacts, as I mentioned earlier, each of these has a hash, and each hash has the pivot menu. And you can actually take some reparative actions as well. You can add these hashes through Cisco Visibility to your AMP for endpoints, simple custom detections or block lists, and take reactive actions right here from the threat grid interface. You can also quickly view the registry activity and see what registry keys were created or modified. And of course, you can see file activity as well. Both the right-hand side and left-hand side menus on the analysis report allow you to quickly zoom in to find exactly the information you're looking for at the time. Going back to the top of the analysis report, we can also easily resubmit this sample. The reason you might want to resubmit a sample are numerous. There are various options available in the course of submitting a sample, and you might want to resubmit it to see if anything different happens when you change some of those options. These options are the same ones you get when submitting a sample for the first time, and so I will use this opportunity to walk you through them now. When you submit a sample, you can give it your own tags for you to search for later and pull up quickly. You can mark it as private. Obviously, if you're submitting files from inside your organization, you might have concerns about privacy. Files that are submitted automatically are marked private by default. Files that you're submitting manually, you have the option of marking them as private or leaving them open as public. You can check the box to have the system email you when the analysis is complete. It will simply email the account address that's on file with your user account. You can select the virtual machine that's going to be used for this analysis. Below that, you can view the packages that are installed on the virtual machine that you have selected and make informed choices as a result. Playbooks is one of the many strategies that ThreatGrid Engineering has developed and built into the tool to increase our ability to evade detection by malware. Many malware authors code techniques into their products to allow them to detect when they are being investigated and behave differently or simply abort and delete themselves as a result. We obviously don't want that to happen, and one of the ways that we get around that is via playbooks. Playbooks allows the system to take certain automated actions that emulate user behavior. In this portion of the submission dialog, you can select a playbook, you can select no playbooks, or from this uh, additional menu of other options that are available. We are going to hit OK on any dialog boxes and move on. You can select the network exit. This is where all communications from your sample are going to appear to be coming from. We're going to select New York. We can submit a callback URL. This is a URL on your end that ThreatGrid will reach out to with a post to send the results of the analyses to. We're going to leave that blank. Runtime is selectable between two and 30 minutes. We're going to set it at 10. If the sample is in a compressed file that is protected by a password, we can enter the password here. Ours is not, so we won't. And we can go ahead and click Submit. And we see in the bottom right that it has been submitted for analysis. And we can click on that pop-up and view the analysis in progress. We can also go back to the dashboard 
And now we see that in our row of thumbnails, we have this new window here showing us the sample awaiting detonation in the virtual environment. Now that we can see the sample running in our bar of thumbnails on the dashboard, that means we can interact with it as well via a feature known as Glovebox. The sample is currently running with the user emulation playbook of Dialog OK enabled, which just means that if any pop-up boxes appear, the system will click on OK automatically. The main thing I wanted to show you here, however, is Glovebox functionality, which means that I can interact with this sample in its environment while it runs. I can take various actions in the system as the user that would normally be sitting at the console. This can allow me to select various files, click other buttons, then OK on any dialog boxes that may appear, and otherwise alter the direction of the execution of the malware as required for my organization's research purposes. While that sample is running, we're going to take a moment and talk about Casebooks. Now, Casebooks is a Cisco visibility feature with all the data hosted in Cisco visibility and the APIs provided by Cisco visibility, but other products can leverage this capability. Casebooks allows security analysts to store and investigate various observables from a central location. We're going to go back to the interface now, looking at a different sample analysis, and it talks more about this powerful feature. Now, I had previously mentioned that as you go through the sample analysis reports, all of the observables have these pivot menus attached to them. Some of the options in these pivot menus are add to new casebook and investigate in visibility. Now, all of this is powered by Cisco visibility, but we're going to click add to new casebook right now. And you can see in the pop-up on the bottom right that it says that a casebook has been created. You will find this option on every observable pivot menu in the display. So we're going to take this domain and add it to the current casebook. We see the pop-up on the bottom right showing us that it has been added. And if we click on the casebook icon here in the bottom right, we see our casebook with these two items both already looked up in the various reputation engines and threat intelligence sources that I have configured in my visibility account. We can see that the domain is known to be malicious. We can see that the URL is known to be malicious. Via these pivot menus, we can also take the same actions available directly in the interface, but having them all together in the casebook allows me to give this investigation a name, add a description, add my notes for any details that I may have found out independently in the course of my investigation, and pivot directly into visibility to investigate both of these and any other observables that I may have added at once. This is the interface for Cisco Visibility, which gives you many, many different investigative and response options. You can see immediately that we've got this constellation of IP addresses at which the domain has been seen. You get this kind of information immediately and intuitively through Cisco Visibility. I could, and probably will, do another video about Cisco Visibility. This video is about ThreatGrid, but I encourage you to find out more about Cisco Visibility and how it can help you make more effective and more efficient use of your existing Cisco security investments. Back in the ThreatGrid interface, one more thing that I want to cover with you is how to use the search functionality. You can easily search the entire collection of threat grid sample analyses and malware threat intelligence using this simple interface. So we're just looking for a domain here and immediately we get back in the last 30 days out of all the samples that we have access to, a list of which samples reached out to this domain for any reason. And from each of these, you can go to the sample report, you can resubmit it if you need to, you can look at all of the same information that I just showed you in the analyses reports. And that's just looking for samples. We can also search for artifacts, domains, all these other types of observables. We can search by not just freeform, but we can look for specific strings in behavior indicators, domains. We can search by IP, MD5, any of these options. A very powerful and customizable search tool. Because remember, ThreatGrid is not just a malware analysis tool. It is also a malware threat intelligence platform. We analyze millions of potentially malicious samples per day and we retain all of this information in a global database of all malware attributes and characteristics that the system has seen. This search interface allows you to benefit from that collected global threat intelligence. Next to the search icon in the interface is the help icon. 
And I encourage you to make use of it because there's some very detailed information on how to use the system included in these help files, including how to use the API. Everything that I've shown you through the web interface is also available via an API, allowing you to create your own product integrations with your existing Security Operations Center toolkits and processes. And this concludes our introductory look at ThreatGrid. As you can see, it's a powerful tool that lowers the barriers to entry for advanced malware analysis. For more information about ThreatGrid, simply go to threatgrid.com or talk to your Cisco account representative. Thank you.